Well, there's a lot to discuss here. Elaine Kamark is a CNN contributor and senior fellow at Brookings. Rina Shah is a Republican strategist. Welcome to both of you. First of all, let's hear from the candidates themselves. We're run by stupid people. Stupid, stupid people. And we found that out at the debate with Joe. How did that work out? And we're going to find it out again on Tuesday night. Is anybody going to be watching? Thank you, Are you Yes, I am. Yes. Well, they both seem ready to go. How have they been prepping and how do you... Uh, how do they look to you both? Rena, you first. Becky, this is the Trump we know. And so far, what we've seen from him as we approach this really consequential debate is his desire to come across more angry and unbuttoned because he realizes that's what gets him the adoration that he long has loved. And he thrives off of that. So going into such, again, uh, a, a time and a, and a night that is going to determine the future of this race, he knows he has to really try everything. And the everything means going back to his old ways while also peppering with something new. So I'm not at all surprised to see his behavior recently, but I do know that he's going to have to inject a great deal more policy than he ever has before in order to come across as looking far more presidential than he did in his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic back in the approach to 2020's election. Elaine, how is Harris looking to you at this point? Well, she's looking very confident. She has spent the weekend in, in Pittsburgh studying issues and, and trying to get her lines ready for this debate. Um, debating Donald Trump mm -hmm. is really hard because you never know what on earth he's going to say and if he's going to bring something completely out of the blue. His behavior on the campaign trail is completely unhinged from time to time. He he talks about things that you have no idea why he's talking about them or even what he's referring to. So I think Kamala Harris has has two two jobs. One is to present herself as capable of leading. And the second is to make sure that people understand that Donald Trump's head isn't exactly screwed on straight. Mm. This is fascinating, isn't it? We are, of course, at a pivotal moment in the election itself. Early voting will be underway soon. And Donald Trump posted this weekend vowing, quote, when I win, those people that cheated will be prosecuted to the full ex extent of the law. Those involved will be caught and prosecuted at levels, unfortunately, never seen before in our country. Promising prosecution for voter fraud is fair, but there's... No evidence, of course, that it happens in the United States. So this sounds just like a threat to election workers. How is that playing out in the United States? Rena? This authoritarian unmasked business that Trump is engaged in and has been engaged in, let's be clear, for four years, doesn't sit well with so many center-right folks, folks who are moderate and still may consider themselves registered Republicans, but opposed to Trump and Trumpism. So he's got to take that into consideration. But he, again, continues to double down with that rhetoric that he thinks resonates with folks who are frustrated by what they believe is a Washington that doesn't reflect them, what they believe is a deep state that exists to get rid of folks like Trump. And so he's speaking to, to them more than anything. But what I'm most concerned about, and I think most average Americans need to wake up to, is that Trump and his people for years have been working the legal system. And they've been also working at the local grassroots level. In Georgia, for example, there are his loyalists embedded in commissions to do his bidding. And so I think if this race is close, this is something I've been saying privately for a long time to friends. If this race is close, my worry is that this mm. gets kicked to the courts and it gets determined in Trump's favor because of the many years that Trump has had to have his loyalists drilled down into the system mm. and essentially do what he believes is right for him and what he believes has been stolen from him. And this is so resonant and so important at the moment to, to both of you. Elaine, I'm, I'm going to get you to, to pick up here. The, the New York Times and Siena College have come out with a new poll. And we must always take polls 
with a grain of salt, of course, especially polls of total national voters. But this one just underscores what a knife's edge this race is on. Uh, but if you look at this specific number, 28% of voters say they need more information on Harris. Only 9% say they need more information on Trump. So to, to the point that Rena was making earlier uh, and the fact that this is um, the, the sort of comments that we've been hearing from Donald Trump, will Harris be able to cut through the noise of tomorrow's debate? Um, and you pointed out that it's there and reintroduce herself. Well, that's, that is her challenge. She has to reintroduce herself because, after all, Donald Trump is a known quantity. Um, in, in Among po politicos for many years now, there's been a debate on what is Trump's ceiling. You know, is it 45 percent? Is it 47 percent? No one really thinks it's 50 percent of the popular vote. But as Rena pointed out, um, this is a state-by-state uh, election. And there are a lot of people in some of those states who are willing to go to bat for Donald Trump, even if he loses. And that, of course, is going to be the issue here. Will Donald Trump be able to um, litigate his way out of a loss, uh, which is what he's preparing mm. to do, clearly? Or will the courts ultimately be with him? Now, I will remind everyone that in 2020, the Trump campaign filed 62 lawsuits, and they lost 61 lawsuits. So as this moves up through the legal system, okay, uh, Donald Trump has more and more trouble. Mm. Uh, not before the election, though, at this point, it seems. I do want our viewers to hear a new political ad from the Harris campaign. Both of you have a listen to this. His national security advisor. Donald Trump will cause a lot of damage. The only thing he cares about is Donald Trump. And the nation's highest ranking military officer. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Take it from the people who knew him best. Donald Trump is a danger to our troops and our democracy. We can't let him lead our country again. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Rena, two of many former Trump allies there in that ad. I wonder, firstly, to you, is this an effective argument against Donald Trump? Is it pitched correctly and at the right audience? Well, the audience is correct, um, but the messaging, I think, could be a little bit more broader. Look, I, I'm one of those people that's been fighting against Trumpism mm. uh, for eight years now, and, and it's never been easy because it's almost as if we're working with a moving target here. Uh, and I realize that sounds bizarre to some folks, but, you know, there was a sense in political circles in Washington for the longest time that this man has to be defeated simply on his face alone. He's not unappealing. But what we've realized... And and what we ought to be clear about here is how much this election is about a feeling, a feeling of where the country is going. And so though you have great folks coming out and doing that brave act of saying, I worked for this man and he's a danger to the future of our republic, it is helpful, but it's not enough. It has to be part of a multi-pronged strategy. So I do commend the Harris campaign for trying it on for size and promulgating this message. It's important. Uh, but look, at the end of the day, we know she's running a very condensed mm. campaign here. Yeah. Her timeline is so short, so she's got to try it all. Uh, but it, I will make this last point here, and I think it's been said before, but it bears repeating. There's a reason J.D. Vance is with Trump on this ticket, and Mike Pence is not. Mike Pence would not run again with this man. And that should tell everybody everything they mm. need, need to know about Donald J. Trump. That's right. Elaine, briefly, effective? Yes, look. I think the, the most important thing, I'll say it very quickly, is that there's a handful of Republicans out there. They voted for Nikki Haley. They didn't vote for Donald Trump. There's a handful of Republicans out there who I think Kamala Harris can get to vote for her. So ads like this, plus all the Republican endorsements over the weekend, like Liz Cheney and her father, Dick Cheney, saying they would vote for Harris, 
all of that is geared towards a very small number of people. But as you pointed out, on a race that's razor thin, that's all you need is a small number. Mm, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump head to head 36 hours from now. And